Hey, my name is Clayton with Tannis. Today we're going to be doing an install with a Tannis Armor tubeless insert on an Envy rim with a Maxxis Asagai double down tire. Um, there's a lot of info, a lot of videos already out there. We're just going to go through the tips um, that make these harder installs easier. So first things we're going to want, I like having a trash can. One of these, this helps to support the wheel, gives you good leverage, you're not working on the ground. Five gallon bucket can work well, or you can try to do this on the ground, but I'll show you in a later step, this bucket, this uh, trash can makes a big difference. We also are gonna want our tire levers, our sealant, rim tape, and valve stems. We want our rim to be taped with a clean tape that's not damaged, and we have our valve stem installed. Today we're using the NV valve stems because of the rim profile, these NVs valve stems fit specifically to it. Our inserts do not require a specific valve. We can use other brands valves. We do make our own valve stems that have cutouts to them that help, but we have cutouts in our insert to allow the air um, to get around the insert. So we're gonna make sure there's no damage on our tape. We're gonna make sure our valve is tight. You do not wanna be using a wrench or pliers to tighten this down. This is just finger tight. If you're getting air leaking around your um, valve stem here, it's usually traveling underneath your tape somewhere and traveling through the rim and leaking here. So pull your tire apart, inspect that tape, make sure it's clean, not damaged, it's not peeled up anywhere, and then we're just gonna make sure that valve's snug down finger tight. Okay, now we have our tubeless uh, rim set up with our tape and valve. We're gonna pop open our tire, tire here. So we have a Maxxis Asagai double down tire on an Envy rim. This is known to be one of the harder installs out there. So we want to uh, actually show you the tricks that make these easier on an install like this. So unfold your Maxxis tire here. I love working with a brand new tire. You don't have any of the mess of old sealant, peeling it off, okay? We're gonna do things a little bit differently today with installing this because of the profile of this MV rim. And I wanna to talk to you about this rim well on here. So the rim well is the lowest portion of your rim. It's where your bead has to sit when installing your tire to give you the most room um, available of your tire bead. Your, when aired up, your beads of your tire then sit up against the edges and you can see they're raised to that rim well. You can also see this is an asymmetrical rim, which means this side of rim bead is actually wider than this side. That makes this harder if you're trying to get that rim, that tire bead down in that rim well. So there's some rims out there that are gonna have a nice wide rim well that's deep. That makes it an easy install. We have a very narrow rim well with wide bead shoulders. That makes this a difficult install. So because of that, we're gonna install the tire completely first, no sealant, no insert, and air it up to seat both beads on the tire. So let's do that. So we're gonna make sure our direction is correct. I also wanna point out, remember which is your shallow side. This is specific to this rim, but this also applies to a lot of asymmetrical rims out there. My shallow side on this rim is my non-brake side or my drive side. So I'm gonna remember that once this tire's installed. So my direction is correct, front of the bike. I'm gonna line up my X's over the top of my valve stem. And we're actually gonna to work towards the valve stem. So my saying is when you're removing a tire, you start at the valve stem. When you're installing a tire, you stop at the valve stem. So you always work towards the valve stem when installing it. So I wanna make sure the bead of my tire is down in that rim well. And then I'm just gonna roll this bead up onto that rim. I can do this with my hands, no tire lever necessary because that bead is sitting right in the center of that rim well, okay? You can see that shoulder and that rim well and that's giving me the looseness that I need. The other reason this makes it so difficult when you're installing inserts is because you're making an insert and both beads fight for the same space in that rim well. That's why we're gonna remove one of those problems and seat both beads right now. So now again, we're gonna go opposite of my valve stem, supporting that tire on the uh, trash can here, and we're gonna to work towards the valve stem, just pushing that bead. This is a standard tire install, no insert at this time, towards that valve. Again, you can see if my tire is down in that rim well, it is off the bead shoulder all the way around. I can push this bead of this tire onto the rim with my hands, no tire levers. Fortunately for the us, this should be a pretty tight install. So 
So we should be able to just pump this up with our pump. Right now I don't have a valve core in the valve stem. I don't need one because we're actually going to be letting the air out of this right away. All I want right now is both of those beads seated. We're going to use our little tool here and switch. No insert, no sealant, that's a tight bead, which is a good thing, but that also makes these installs harder. Okay, we're pumping this up. You've heard a little pop there. So my bead is seated around that rim just like I, if I was installing it normally. So I'm looking at that line of the tire. The line of the tire is even next to the rim all the way around. That's what we want. Okay, now I'm going to let all my air back out. Here's the key. I remembered earlier the brake side was the wider shoulder side. The drive side was the narrower one. This is the side I want to deseat. I want to leave this bead seated on the bead the whole install. It's removing that bead from the rim well, removing it so we don't have to fight it later on. You don't have to do this. There's a lot of tires and rims out there that fit pretty loosely where you're gonna be able to just put the insert in without doing this first step of installing the tire first. So, but this is just gonna make this install much easier on this NV rim. Let all my air out. Also, I'm just gonna say a good tubeless setup should seal and hold air without sealant. A sealant shouldn't be the requirement. If your rim is taped properly, your valve stem's tight and fits securely, you shouldn't need sealant to hold air. That held air great. Our beads are seated, both sides. I'm gonna de-seat just the one side. So I'm just gonna push down on it and push that bead into the rim well. One side's de-seated, that other side, that bead's still seated up against the rim. That's what I want, that's great, okay. Now, if you're not careful, I can, if I push too hard on that rim up, that tire up, I, I'm gonna de-seat that other side, which if it happens, it's not the end of the world, it's fine, but I'm gonna try to not do that. So now I'm gonna remove this bead. So I'm removing a tire, so I'm starting at my valve stem. I can pull the tire this direction, pull it up, see my gap right on top of my valve stem, pull it across, and then we're just gonna work that around, okay. Now I've got one bead back off. It didn't take that much time, but that's gonna save us a ton of time in the end. Now I'm gonna grab my new insert. We're gonna pull it out of the packaging here. We've got some nice stickers in here, so when you're done, you can put them on your rim, show that you've got some Tannis armor inside that tire. We do have installation instructions as well. You're watching this video, so you can throw those away. Once I pull this out, you can, if you, uh, you can prep by putting your insert on your rim to start like that. That's gonna help these folds and everything settle out and make the insert take the shape that it needs to take when it's sitting inside of your tire. So if you do this early on and let this sit for a little bit, that's gonna help, but not necessary at all. So we've got a fresh insert, it's got a couple creases, so I'm pinching this. This is where our flexible wings come into place. I'm pinching this to make more room as I put this in the tire and kind of get this insert to actually take the shape I want it to. So now I'm gonna identify, we want that center to be able to kind of flex like that, that's good. I'm gonna identify where my valve stem is gonna go and the cutouts for my valve stem. So I'm gonna put those, that inside the tire there, over the top of my valve stem. And this is where this trash can becomes really helpful because I get to push down on this insert, it's creating support and I'm not trying to fight it on the ground and damage my really expensive carbon rims. So we're gonna work that inside the tire and I'm just pushing 
that insert down one side of the insert down over the bead of the rim. It does take a little bit of stretch. So this is really great where I can grab this tire. I can push down with my hand and push this and stretch this rim, this insert over that rim. I cannot stress the importance of having this trash can underneath me. It makes such a big difference. Um, they're not that expensive at Home Depot. If you're doing tire changes, it's a great garage addition. It's the simplest tool, but it really makes installing inserts so much easier. Um, so I have one bead of insert over the bead of my rim. And now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make sure that my valve cutout is over my valve again. Just keep that lined up as we're installing. And same next step is we're just gonna push that second bead of insert and I can just push down on this over that rim. And it's gonna keep, keeps popping out on me. I want that whole insert to take and sit over the top of the rim like the one on the wall is sitting. This is where us doing that step of installing the tire first and setting that other bead is making a massive difference because it's giving me more room in this tire to put this insert. And hold my tire in certain places, pushing down, pushing that insert towards the opposite side. And then using my thumbs, see this last little section of insert here, and push that down onto the rim. Now we can see the inside of that. That insert is sitting all the way around where I want it to. The insert is installed on the beads. Now all I have left is one bead of the tire. If I flip my tire over and look at the other side, it's still seated. The bead is seated most of the way around. It's de-seated itself a little bit because I've been working on it. But that's fine. Really, the helpful part is it's still seated in a couple places. All right. Now we're going to install the final bead. I'm installing a tire, so I'm going to work towards my valve stem. So I'm going to start opposite of it. Reminder, the reason I'm doing that is that valve stem is taking up space in that rim well. That's valuable space in that rim well. If I start over here, when it gets tight over opposite my valve stem, the valve stem isn't going to allow the beads to drop into the rim well. So that's why I'm going to start opposite, work towards my valve stem. So there's two ways I can do this. Um, actually, I got to get to the bead drop here in a second. I'm going to start by grabbing my tire and I'm going to roll the insert up and push that bead down. So I'm flexing that insert up and pushing the bead down into the, into the rim. So I roll, push it down. A fresh tire here with a little bit of stiction actually helps because that's going to hold itself in place. If that was lubed up really well, it would just pop back off. So where this is kind of sticky and a fresh tire, it's actually kind of nice. So that's going to hold tension and I'm going to just keep doing that. So grab that, roll up, push down. That tension that's holding is what I want to keep working around. It is completely fine that that bead is seated essentially because it's holding the tension I want it to hold to continue working this bead. So I can grab that tire, roll that insert, push the bead down, roll that insert. I'm rolling the edge of that insert up. Let me show you on this one. I'm rolling the edge of that insert up, creating that space so then I can push my bead of my tire down underneath that. So that's what you're seeing underneath that tire. Roll that insert up, that feeling you want, and then push the bead down. All right, we're working towards our valve stem. I want to end right over the top of the valve stem, so I'm working both sides evenly up towards it.
Okay. It's real tight now. Okay. This is what getting really, really tight. So now my hands, I can't grab and get that bead to go on any further. Now I have to drop that bead down into the rim well everywhere else. Two ways I can do this. Use a tire lever to drop the bead or I can tuck and roll. So dropping the bead is I'm going to enter the tire lever with that angle there and just push down. Okay. You don't want it like that because that's just going to dig into your rim tape, damage it. It's not going to drop it like you want it to. I want it to be pushing down like that and then I can slide it around. Okay. We want, you can see the line of the tire where the bead is seated. We want that underneath the insert in the rim. Well, we need this bead in that rim. Well, the other way I can do this is tuck and roll. I'm going to take the insert up here. I'm going to grab it opposite to me with my fingers and I'm going to roll the insert towards me and push the tire down into that, that rim. Well, just like that, you see that tire drop in the space that that creates. I like this one better. It's just the way I've always done it. But some people like using a tire lever, especially if you've got a big tire lever, you can push that bead down if you can't get that insert to roll over. So now you can see how much tire has disappeared under the edge of that rim. It's exactly what I want. I know the bead is sitting in the rim well in that deep section of the rim and giving me more bead to work with. Now that I've got that down in there, I've got more tire to work with over here. And if I do that step over and over again, I can probably muscle this on and roll it on with my hands. My goal is to always install a tire without a tire lever. Anytime you bring a tire lever into the equation and you start wrenching on it, it's too easy to create too much leverage on the tire and rip the bead or the casing of the tire. It's actually pretty common on tires to rip the inner casing and you don't, doesn't look like you've ripped it. But if you stretch that tire too hard, you rip the inner casing of the tire and then you get a wobble in your tire. That's not a wobble from the insert being installed. That's a wobble from damage to the tire. So that's what we want to eliminate here. And that's why I'm always going to try to roll that tire on with my hands. If I continue to make sure that bead is dropped into the rim well, I usually can do that even on a downhill casing tire, a double down casing. But sometimes if you just don't have that hand strength, or your tire is really, really tight because there are those rim and tire combos out there that are really tight, tighter than this one. I'm going to take my tire lever and you might need even two. And I, I like doing this just with one where I'm going to hold this bead with my hand, or my thumb, I'm pushing down on it. The other thing is, is I'm holding the tire from flipping up with my legs here. So I'm pushing down on that, stretching that I'm working towards that valve stem my tire lever under there you just want that to roll over really nice you don't want it to dig into your your rim tape because you don't want to damage that it should just take a little bit of effort as i keep doing it i can keep pushing that bead down into that rim well underneath that insert and give myself more room to work with nice flick there You don't want to be wrenching this. If it's really, really tough, you don't want to just muscle that on with a tire lever. You can muscle it on with your hands, not with a tire lever. But we're working that. You can actually see, look here, my bead has started to creep back up into the seated position. So that's what's making this difficult. If this is getting hard. Stop, keep checking and go all the way back around. We're going to tuck and roll that section right there again. Drop that bead into the rim well. I'm going to reiterate, that's why I'm working towards my valve stem. If I was over here or if this valve stem was in a different place, the bead would not be able to sit down in the rim well because the valve stem would be in the way. So you're working against yourself if you don't end at your valve stem. Just with that little section I dropped there, now all of a sudden I've got way more room. One more right here in the center. Should be able to drop this in that lax section is probably going to be pretty tight to get this lever under you can either try to just push it down with your hands or use a lever but at this point i'm able to just pop that down into place with my hands now we have a tire mounted we didn't have to fight the other bead the other thing i want to uh, talk about when you are working on one bead if one bead of the tire is already installed don't try dropping the already installed side into the rim well that's not doing you any advantage. You want to get that out of the rim well and out of your way. 
So only put the bead that you're working on, the bead that you're trying to install down on the rim well. All right, now we have our tire installed, ready to install sealant with our inserts. We have ports that allow your air and sealant to pass from the inner chamber to the outer chamber. You can add sealant to the tire before installing, but I like adding it to the valve stem after installing that puts the sealant in the inner air chamber and then it's going to be have an easier time working outwards to the outer air chamber of the tire than trying to work from the outer air chamber inwards. So we got our sealant here, valve cores removed. I'm just going to squeeze that in. I like having my tire on a little bit of an angle. It's going to drain my sealant down to the bottom. If I put it here, it can puddle and try to push itself back out the valve stem. So we're just going to do this on the side. I like in a 29 or 27.5 high volume tire, I like about four ounces of sealant. You can run as much or little sealant as you want. Like I mentioned earlier, a good tubeless system does not require, rely on the sealant to seal. I'm now going to install my valve core. Now, if you're dealing with a looser fitting tire, this install would have gone much easier for you, but a looser fitting tire can also have a harder time airing up after install. You know, you can, most of the time I'm gonna be able to do this with a hand pump. If you are using a compressor, keep your valve core removed and inflate your tire with your compressor without a valve core. That's gonna let the maximum amount of air enter the rim as quickly as possible to seat those beads quickly. Where I already know that I can inflate this tire with a hand pump with an insert, this tire is absolutely going to inflate. No, it shouldn't be a problem. And if I'm wrong here, y'all can laugh at me, but we're gonna try it. Up it goes. Now you don't want to exceed the recommended tire pressure settings on the tire to seat this bead. And you hear that pop. Once this is aired up, we're going to do what we did earlier and we're going to verify that that bead is seated. You can see the line of the tire all the way around and is even. You don't want that to dip under the rim at all. If it dips under the rim, you know, you've got to air, keep airing it up until it seats. So we're good all the way around both sides. Tighten down my valve core. This is where I'm going to shake that tire, work that sealant around. You're also listening for any air loss. If there's any air loss around the tire or the rim. Um, you, you know, you don't want any air loss. If you're leaking air, see where it's at. You may have to pull it back up, back apart and take a look at your, uh, your rim tape. The other part that I wanted to cover, we did not lubricate the tire or the insert on this install. Okay. You can, if you're having a hard time, you can use a soapy water solution. I don't like doing that. It's not always recommended because your sealant companies, um, they're not going to want that outside product. That's uh, soapy water to influence their product, the sealant that you're putting in the tire. So if I do need lubrication, I'll actually use sealant where if I need to lubricate that last bit of bead that I'm putting it on, or I need to lubricate the bead to get it underneath the insert, I'll actually take my little bottle of sealant if I have extra and I'll dump it on the tire around. It makes a massive mess, but use the sealant that you're going to be putting in your tire. That way you're not diluting it with a soapy water solution. Work quickly though, because that sealant can dry up and get sticky. You want to use it as lube while it's, you know, a liquid and while it's going to actually help you. But we usually you're able to do that without any, any lubrication. Now, the other part is if that insert does show that there's a wobble in your tire, you're going to remove it and inspect that you did not rip the casing of the tire and then it's not a tire damage. The other thing we can do is we can remove our air pressure and let the air, the tire air down. And then we can wiggle that insert around. Sometimes that insert can actually sit a little crooked on the rim in the tire and that could be causing, we're showing that wobble. So that's why we'd deflate and then just pinch and work that insert around again 
to make sure that insert is sitting on the rim just like this insert sitting on the rim. You don't want that sitting on your, in your tire like that. So if you're seeing a wobble, it can either be caused by the inserts not sitting straight or the casing of the tire is damaged and you wanna look at replacing that tire. All right, we're all pumped up. Last thing I wanna show is, um, we, is removing this tire. We talked about earlier, we installed the tire first, seated both beads, that's not necessary. You can just install one bead of the tire, install the insert, install your second bead. We did that for, to make this as easy as possible on this NV wheel. We talked about the bead shoulder widths and how one was wider. When you're removing your tire, one of the harder parts is getting that bead back down into that, that rim well. If you don't know your rims or you've never installed your tires, you're not sure, you wouldn't know that this side of this rim has a much wider bead shoulder than this side of the rim. And so if you're trying to get the bead to drop down from this side, you have to push the bead much farther from this side than you would from this side. So just try both sides until you get that bead to drop into the rim well. So we're gonna let all the air back out of this and I'll show you how I do this. We'll remove our valve core to make this a little quicker. Okay, so remember that's a wider side. We're gonna go back to this side that I know is a narrower shoulder. I'm starting at my valve stem to remove because I'm just trying to get that bead to actually push into the center of the rim. I can do my tuck and roll where I roll the tire up and push the bead down into that. I'm now gonna work all the way around the tire and you actually see that suck itself down to that rim well. Work itself all the way around. Now when I actually remove my valve, I'm starting, I remove my tire, I'm sorry. I'm starting my valve stem. Remember, you're removing your tire, you start at your valve stem. If you're installing your tire, you end at your valve stem. That's sucked down in the rim well there. I'm gonna push the tire up until I can see that bead. Work my tire lever underneath it. Same thing, I should be able to pull that bead off all the way around. Then you can pull your, get your fingers under there, work your insert out of your rim, put your other tire on. There's install and removal of a Tannis insert. I hope those tips helped. Um, it's the little things that make these, this easier. I'm not saying easy. This isn't an easy install. You saw me work at this. This took some time, but those tips can make it easier. If you ignore them, I mean the trash can starting and stopping your valve stem, it makes it so much harder. So if you have anything, other tips, leave them in the comments. Let us know. We'd love to hear what you do. Thanks.